Welcome to Bob Larson Live. Tonight, demon possession debate. Well, <laughs> at least that's what the, <laughs> what the thumbnail said and what we were supposed to have tonight. Oh, well. You are in for an interesting evening, okay? Now, we're taking live chats tonight, and uh, as I get going here, I want to know what you think about what's about to happen. Wayne, my dear friend Wayne from Red Deer, Alberta. Wayne, you and I go back, what, 20, 25 years? A long time. He's been involved with this ministry and in the Do What Jesus Did movement. So good to hear from you. General Lee just says, hello, troops coming to you from the Northwest regions. Lucas and Diane, who head up our Do What Jesus Did as directors of this ministry worldwide. Blessings to everybody and the Do What Jesus Did leadership all over the world. David, God bless you all with the freshness of God, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray you work in Dr. Bob in the most anointed supernatural way. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> I'm going to need it. Wendy, hi, Bob. God bless. Angela, do you think God is mad at me for burning the Bible? What? You burned a Bible? I'd like to know why you burned a Bible. Well, let's get something straight. The Bible is just leather, paper, and print. The physical Bible. Christ is the living word. And this is the printed word. But the print that's on the actual pages isn't significant. It is an emblem of our faith. And as such, it should never be desecrated. But we're not like the Muslims who will, in some parts of the world, kill you if you hurt the Quran. No, we believe that Christ is the word. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. But... We do revere the book, the Bible, the physical book as such. I use it as an instrument of the sword of the Spirit. However, if you burned one, I would like to know what that's all about and what was behind it. But if you've turned to Christ, I know in Satanism sometimes they will tell you that if you desecrate holy objects or burn a Bible or something like that, you could never be saved. That's a lie. Don't you believe it, okay? Adrian, my good friend Adrian. Yay, troops! And Mushroom Ministries, and that's not psilocybin getting high. That is <laughs> the real thing, mushrooms, what God made. Hello, do what Jesus did. Northeast, Tom and Margaret, blessings to everybody. <clears throat> Cowboys! Paranormal production. Well, that's interesting. Hello, everybody. God bless you. Krista, I have a demon that identifies itself simply as the demon that steals your destiny. Is it reaching past the bounds of interrogation to ask it to reveal my destiny before I cast it out? Yes. But there is a demon. I, I, I dealt with a demon one time called the destiny stealing demon. In fact, we have a post on YouTube with that particular exorcism. I think that happened down in Lake of Florida. My good friends the Cooper Riders would know all about that. But yes, demons can be assigned to steal a destiny. But don't ask it. Remember, your destiny belongs to the Lord. Whatever the demons seem to know about your destiny is not what's important. They may know bits and pieces or sense bits and pieces because they can see God's purpose in your life to a certain degree because they see God's hand upon you. But they don't know of an absolute certainty what your destiny is. You never want to ask a demon that kind of question. You know, someday I need to do a show on the subject of the interrogation of demons. And as you know, we teach at Bob Larson University, it's important for demons to speak in certain occasions to objectify the information. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. But at the same time, we don't get extraneous information that's not essential to the case at hand to cast out the spirit. Leland, it's good to know that there's still people that don't manifest demons when in conversation. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. All right, tonight, once you get it ready, <clears throat> it's going to be interesting because the guest that I was to have live tonight, who's an internet influencer, bailed. 
the last moment. So I called him. I tried to clear things up, and uh, he said, well, I thought we were going to have a discussion, not a debate. I said, what's the difference? Well, I'm not prepared for a debate. And it was a bit of a tense conversation, to say the least. But I tried to explain that I, I didn't mean any ill will, but that he does post on his site some very controversial videos, and that they raise some questions that I just can't let slide. And that's why I wanted him to be on the show. For example, he says that Kenneth Copeland has demons. Okay. And the non-canonical book of Enoch is a source of explaining demons. And he says the demons are not fallen angels, but come from the Nephilim. And that angel, I mean that aliens, certainly angels, but aliens are explained in the book of Revelation. So the gentleman who was going to be with me tonight is a young man who describes himself as a paranormal demonologist. I asked him what that meant. He said, well, I'm a demonologist. I have interest in the paranormal. I'm fascinated by weird stuff. Okay. It says on his YouTube site, his goal is, and I quote, shedding light on darkness from a biblical perspective. Now, I'm not going to diss that because that's what he believes. That's what he wants to do. And it seemed from the conversation and reading between the lines of the videos that he is a Christian of some particular flavor. Not exactly sure. But it still left me in a quandary what I was going to do. And, you know, this prompted me to think about what I really would like to talk about tonight. What's wrong with biblical faith in America? One of the problems, there are too many internet influencers who seem to be making up their own theology as they go along, disseminated to the masses without any accountability and little credibility. I've sort of said that before, I'm going to say it again, because it's getting to be a problem, and the problem's getting worse. We have to face it. There's no pope of the internet <laughs> to say, don't do that. And what the internet has turned into is a wonderful thing and a horrible thing. Now, I'm not just talking about the porn, etc. I'm talking about the internet being a place where anybody with an opinion and a microphone can say what they want and they don't answer to anybody. In most cases, they don't answer to anybody. That's a problem. When critics of others refuse to debate the opposition, and I'm not referring to my guest tonight, who was going to be my guest, I'm just talking in general about what's going on on the internet. When they refuse to debate the opposition and take cheap shots with no regard for open rebuttal, that's wrong. And that's what's going on out there, especially with the critics of deliverance. Who are these people? They just get on there. You don't know where they came from. Now, in some cases, you do. They do have certain credentials, and they do have a biblical background. They do have established ministries and so on. You've heard me say this before. I'm going to say again. If you can't find a website, and if that website is not sufficient in telling you who this person is, where they came from, how they got to be who they are, and our website does that, what their belief system is, what their doctrine is, and what their ministry is all about, Beware. There's a reason they're not telling you all of that. But I want you just, in a moment, we're going to take a look at the beliefs of the man who was supposed to be here tonight. Uh, let me respond to what's up here right now. Jeremy, can you get a demon for practicing Kabbalah? Absolutely. It's Jewish mysticism, it's occultism, and it gets into black magic. Summoning spirits, no. Miguel, do the demon briefing prayers from Bob's book? Oh, he says, do them. <laughs> destiny is one of the declarations. Is that right? Declare your destiny. Angela says, uh, you don't want to know, Bob, but thank you for asking the question. Oh, yes, I am 
a Satanist. Okay, so this is not something you did and became a Christian. You did burn a Bible. So let me just say to you, Angela, as a Satanist, whatever your purpose was in burning that Bible, God knows your heart. I don't think anybody would do that unless they had some kind of Christianity in their background and or some deep bitterness against God because of some hurt, injustice, or maltreatment by those in the Christian community for whatever reason. And if so, I apologize. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But burning a Bible doesn't solve the problem. And burning a Bible isn't going to send you to hell. It's kind of a ridiculous stunt that Satanists do to prove a point. It doesn't prove anything. It's paper and leather. It'll burn. But Jesus rose from the dead for you, Angela. Chaos generator. Hmm. I'm a direct descendant of the very beginnings of the British royal family, thus I'm inherently related to other European royal families. Are those specific demons assigned to bloodlines? Yes, they are. And that would be an interesting topic for me to do some night. Yes, they are. And a lot of it is connected to Freemasonry, including the British royalty. Now, I'm not dissing <laughs> the king and queen. I'm just saying that these are facts. You can look it up. Miguel, maybe he watched your last interview <laughs> last week <laughs> with the new age guy and <laughs> decided to bail. <laughs> okay, you got me laughing on the way. Let's, 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 I want you to see <clears throat> why I wanted to get this guy on live tonight. And then we're going to go back to some more chats, and then we'll go from there. By the way, let me remind you, just before I show you this quite incredible video clip, that a couple of things. Number one, many of you have been asking about my health, the surgery that I had way, 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 way back, three months ago almost, on my foot. Today, after three months, I am walking without a cast. Now, that's problematic in that my leg and my right foot are not quite ready for the prime time yet, so I've got some work to do to get it back. I drove a car today for the first time in three months. My lovely, wonderful wife has been chauffeuring me everywhere, every time I had anything to do or anywhere to go, <sighs> I'm sure she was pleased to lose that job description. But anyway, she's been great about it. And, and uh, we've managed to survive and keep the ministry going. It's been difficult. It's been a challenge. So thank you for your financial support and your prayers and everything that you do to stand with us. And this would be a good time for you right now to, to share a gift by going to boblarson.org and clicking on Donate. One of the best ways you could do is go to extunimus.org and become a member of Extunimus, our streaming platform. We just uploaded a new special series in the cults section on the subject of Buddhism. And we're just uploading right now in the process a whole new complete category. None of this has ever been seen before by anyone called Moments with Bob and Laura Larson, in which Laura and I talk about family issues and spiritual warfare, and she questions me the questions she has always wanted to ask. And those are going to be up there any moment, so be looking for that. Get yourself signed on to Extunimus. Go to extunimus.org or to boblarson.org and click on the part of the website that says Extunimus, and it's a win-win your tax-deductible gift of $20 each month supports the ministry, and you get access to hundreds of videos nobody sees but those who are on Extonimus. All right, I want to show you this video clip that um, our director of production put together in preparation for this man being on the show. So you can see this is not stuff I'm making up. This is taken directly from his website. So I want you to see for yourself what he puts out there.
The grays are a little tricky, but I can show you at least one verse that shows what I believe the grays are in the Bible. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. This right here is your classic alien. That's a cute little fella. I see some similarities. You guys see the eyes here. Um, I mean, frogs look vastly different. And unfortunately, aliens and their makes and models look vastly different as well. I mean, this one isn't even gray. It's freaking brown or tan. And look, this theory isn't my own. This actually comes from others who are ufologists who have actually converted to Christianity. Um, a handful of them have. Just something I wanted to bring to you guys' attention that this is absolutely a thing. We are going to be confronted with these things in the end times. And the frog faces that are in Revelation, they are called evil spirits. So that already puts them in another category from um, angels that look like you and me. There's a branch of demonology known as metaphysics, and I've never really brought it up on my channel, but today we're gonna go ahead and uh, really start jumping into the depths of this. Essentially, metaphysics, you start getting into the physical aspects of demons or demon offspring, physical evidence. You see, if a Nephilim died, they would become a demon. That's the concept, at least according to First Enoch. And then when you look at, for example, um, a dead offspring of the Nephilim, then they would be demonic in nature as well. So following the logic there, a dead siren would be a water demon. You can find this explanation in uh, Vlad's video, which I'm gonna put up here somewhere, um, or down in the description below. I don't see eye to eye in everything he believes, um, but, you know, then again, who does? While writing the outline for this video, we're going to hop now back to Enoch, and I'm going to show you what happened to the Nephilim when they died. This is Enoch chapter 15, and we are going as far as, let's see, and now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from both men and from the holy watchers, and is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on the earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling, but as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. Now, I don't have this next verse right in front of me. I don't know why I didn't put it on my list of verses to go through. Hold on, do I have it? I do not have it. But when Jesus says in the book of Matthew, I'm gonna be putting the verse up here somewhere, that when an evil spirit or an unclean spirit leaves a person, it seeks rest and finds none. Well, demons, they're never going to find rest. They are a perversion of man. They're a perversion of the face of God. We are God's imagers. Demons are essentially, they came from the Nephilim and the Nephilim being abominations. Also, obviously, scorpions saying that they have power of the earth and that they cause destruction. And now we have first Enoch also saying they cause destruction and wreak havoc. And the reason that they're stuck on the earth is because they were born upon this earth originally. How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? <laughs> Cheeseburger. Uh, he does creep me out for sure. Yeah, you can see it in his eyes. Something is off about the man. Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen. You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No. I so here's what's interesting about that. Is this a fruit of the spirit? Watch him carefully because... Well, yeah. I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Long stare. We wrestle not. <laughs> the flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Can and you ex Okay. <laughs> All of you who think Kenneth Copeland is manifesting at that moment, raise your hands. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to get back to that in a moment, but, but you see now what I'm talking about. I thought, okay. You're going to 
put this stuff out there on YouTube, are you willing to defend it? Are you willing to talk about it? Are you willing to have an intense discussion about it? I think you should be able to at the drop of a hat. Like a lot of production value went into all that he did. I mean, he just didn't get in front of the microphone and start doing that. He did some other stuff as well. You can invest that time, effort, and energy, sir. Respond to it. But more to say about that in a moment, okay? Uh, Miss Miss Nepple, I guess what, what that name is. Hi, Bob. Doesn't the Bible teach that all believers can cast out demons? Well, all can. All may, but not all will. Ray, is Freemasonry demonic? Uh, yeah, Ray, it really is. Where's my book of Freemasonry? Somebody keeps taking that out of my studio. I was going to hold it up to you. But anyway, yes, it is demonic, highly demonic. Get my book, Freedom for Freemasonry. Greg says, are demons omnipresent? No. If not, how do they enter thousands of people at the same time? I'm not being sarcastic. I want to know the answer. And the answer is simply this. There are billions and billions and billions and billions of demons, enough to go around several times for every person on earth. We don't know how many. So by the ubiquitousness of their presence, they give the illusion of being everywhere all the time and instantly sharing information with each other and therefore being somewhat omnipresent and even omniscient. Well, that's the impression the devil wants to give, but it's not so. Miguel, cast out the cast, Bob. <laughs> you are the real exorcist. I did cast out the cast, all right? And thank you for your prayers as I get back on my feet, and I'll get to more chats in just a moment here. Now, for those of you who have always wanted to enroll in Bob Larson University and complete the deepest theological, demonological, spiritual, study of the spirit world and the supernatural. There's no other place to go to get the training that is in these 50 videos and 60 courses. So we put together a special enrollment opportunity for the spring to get you started off right. To do some real spring cleaning. And that particular offer, we can't go on forever because, quite frankly, it's through the tax deductible support and part of Bob Larson University that I'm behind this microphone, as well as the gifts of all of you. So we can't continue to do what we're doing right now. You have two days left to avail yourself of a once-in-a-lifetime, maybe. I don't know. It's the first time we've done anything quite this generous. But just temporarily to get you involved and give you an opportunity. Take advantage of it. Go to boblarson.org or boblarsonuniversity.org. Remember to like and share and hit the notification bell and let other people know what's going on and you need to know what's going to be happening. And as always, you can text to give at 833-361-4711. Just take that cell phone, text the word give to that number, 833-361-4711. And thank you so much for your prayers and support. And again, this is a very difficult time for us. We're just now coming out of this. I'm just now getting back to close to 100%. But it's been a challenge financially during that time for a number of reasons. So we deeply appreciate your support. Soldier of the Cross says, Only Yahweh is omniscient and omnipresent. The names demons use are actually more like ranks or job descriptions. Hope that helps. It does. That's a good answer, yeah. Jeremy, Dr. Bob, what do you think of Messianic churches? Well, now that's something I could really wade into with a lot of controversy. I know there's some very good people who go to Messianic churches, and my question is why? What is the point? Well, you, you like the Jewish flavor of it. Oh. Uh, the New Testament isn't good enough? The New Testament? The fulfillment of Christ isn't sufficient? You Maybe it's just traditions you like. Maybe you like wearing a prayer shawl. I don't know. Does it appeal to me, quite frankly? I don't see the point of it. 
I understand why some people do it. They're allowed to blow a shofar, and you can do that in an evangelical church, or at least in some of them. Uh, I'm not making light of it. I, I, I think there's some of you who generally feel drawn to that for one reason or another. But I, I think the book of Galatians is pretty clear. The old is gone. The new is here. And embracing the traditions, the customs, and all of those sorts of things, if it's just a, a matter of cursory interest, it's one thing. But if it's a matter of belief, no. But that would require a really long answer. Breath life. How far back can curses go to Eden? How do you know when the curse is broken? I have a saying in my book on curse breaking. A curse isn't broken until it's broken. But when it's broken, it's broken. Now, you may still suffer some consequences of what the curse has done, whether that's mental, psychological, physical, whatever. And it takes a while to heal and recover from that. But the curse is done. Just like 1 John 1, 8 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10, sorry. <laughs> I got the wrong scripture. But anyway... It, it, you're saved by the confession of your mouth and the believing of your heart. Curses are broken by the confession. All right. Brian. Uh, John MacArthur, the cessationist, is false. Well, he is a cessationist. I'm not a cessationist. Um, John Martha, MacArthur and I have some disagreements, but he's been a great man of God. Uh, Leon. Bob, what's the difference between compartmentalization and trauma? Well, compartmentalization just means that People who have suffered trauma and difficulties in life tend to have different compartments. Well, I like using uh, the file folder concept that you have on your computer. You put data in a certain file folder, and in just that data is there, and you don't access it unless you need it. And that's what happens to the mind. It compartmentalizes information like a specific trauma that would overwhelm the individual psychologically if they were to think about it all the time. So the memory gets stuck over here. The problem is demons can dwell in that without the core identity of the person realizing that but cause torment to them. David, he sounds very persuaded. You talk about the guy whose video we just showed? Well, okay, all right. Uh, demons don't have the gift of the Sabbath, since Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, no rest for the heaven. Miguel, your book is sold out. It's that good. Wonderful. Techno Warrior, congrats on receiving the Techno Warriors Editor's Choice Award for the Jezebel. Our team is praying for your health. Keep it up. Jeremy, I think uh, I just answered you about the Messianic Christians. He says, oh, I am one. Okay, fine. No foul, no harm. I'm not saying... You shouldn't be one. I have no desire to be one. I don't really see. And again, this is a quick answer to a very complex issue. But I don't really see the necessity. If you just like the traditions, okay, fine. But those traditions very clearly have nothing to do with one's relationship to faith through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you just saw this whole thing. A moment ago. Well, but here's some of the things I did want to talk to my guest about. And here's some of the points that I feel compelled to make. So let's start with Ken Copeland. I'm not a fan of the prosperity gospel. I've actually never met Ken Copeland. I only know what I see. Okay. It's not my theological persuasion. But is it really fair to say that a heated discussion he had standing on the step of an automobile, leaning out of the door of a car, being ambushed by a TV show personality, is that really evidence that he has demons? Well, he got mad. He was angry and his eyes flared. Okay. We could have it even, I don't know, a lot of people <laughs> in religious leadership can have demons. Anybody can have a demon if there's an open door in their life. But I'm not going to jump to the conclusion and say that somebody like that has demons. Whether well, I agree with it or not, he's influenced the lives of millions of people for Christ. Yes, some of you may say, well, there's been some false doctrine in there. Perhaps there has, okay? But we're not going to debate that tonight. The question is, 
do we try to take down a religious figure when they're caught in a situation? And I think if he looks back on it now, Ken's a bright guy. He probably figured out that was not really smart of me to stand there and debate that person under those circumstances. But it doesn't mean he has a demon. Okay. Secondly, <clears throat> honestly, I'm sick of this argument. Let's get it straight once and for all. Demons are not from the Nephilim. They're not the hybrid offspring of the Nephilim. Demons are fallen angels. Period. That's been the historic Orthodox Christian tradition from the beginning. It's only lately that this speculation has arisen among many people who are fans of the weird and the paranormal out there. Let's put an end to this nonsense. Now, I have some people out there in deliverance, I know, and some people who once fellowship with this ministry that went that direction, and we don't tolerate that. There is room for a discussion about the Nephilim. And there is some excellent material on there that's well-balanced in the internet and so on, but most of it isn't. Most of it's very spurious. So that's where I stand, period. So whether it's in our spiritual freedom churches or our Do What Jesus Did movement or Bob Larson University, we do not teach that evil spirits are the offspring of Nephilim. But who the Nephilim are, that's another whole issue, okay? Third, I think it's really a stretch to say that aliens are described in Revelation 16. Now, that's one of the stranger images in the whole Bible. Evil spirits coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, and they look like frogs and perform miracles and gather the kings of the world together to battle in the great day of the Lord. Okay? But to go from there to greys and reptilians and whoever? Hmm, okay. Can we just leave that to the coast-to-coast -coast program and not have Christians get into that stuff? And another statement, I, we didn't make it in the video clip. But another one of the statements he made is, quote, Calvinism is wicked. Okay. Now, let's be plain. I am not a tulip five-point Calvinist. But to say that Presbyterians, Reformed churches, and even some Anglican churches are wicked? Really? Come on. That's a theological stretch. Here's the problem again. Anybody, literally anyone, can get on the internet with zero investment, except maybe buying a microphone and a camera and having a computer, and say anything, and make any kind of videos, <laughs> and nobody at YouTube or any of the social media sites is going to worry about what they say. And these people, most of them, don't have websites that are inclusive of appropriate doctrinal statements and biblical education history. So you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know where they got these ideas. They, they're just out there. So I want to give you my take on TikTok, while it's still there, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube religion. Ray. Thank you for answering my question about Freemasonry. I'm a Christian singer, songwriter. Please, when you have a moment, listen to my music. I believe it will bless you. Okay, Ray. Any relationship to Glenn? <laughs> He's a friend of mine. So please, would you uh, just send an email to my office and uh, give me a link of some kind so I know where to go. I'd love to do it. All right. Debbie. It said the demons are the spirits of the Nephilim, like the giants from the fallen angels. Different, totally different thing. 
whether or not there were genetically mutated offspring from Genesis 6, and that cohabitation created mongrelized beings is one thing, but to say that the product then in some sexual union created demons is another leap in logic. Sharon, can a different ranking demon pretend to be or say he is Satan but is a whole other demon? I believe they can to defend Satan himself. Well, okay. Demons have rankings, and some of the names that they have are ranking names, not functional names. So, for example, a demon of rejection, that's functionality. A demon of anger, a demon of murder, that's functionality. But a demon with a ranking name, like Satan, sometimes demons will say, I'm Satan. And I, I correct them. Well, You've earned the right to call yourself Satan because you're very close to the character of who he is. That's why you call yourself Satan, because you're a direct representative of him, but you are not the devil. All right? Jeremy, is zombie like in Dawn of the Dead, demons? Zombie's another whole subject. Is it possible to take an expired human body to soulishly re-energize it and set it walking down the streets <laughs> for an unsuspecting victim. The walking dead. Well, they believe that in Haiti. I've been to Haiti. I've heard the stories. I've had them tell me directly. The voodoo priests. They go out. We get a body. It's been recently buried. We know where the burials are. We know when they take place. As soon as everybody's gone, we go directly to the cave, exhume the body, bring it up, put a soul into it, and it becomes a living zombie doing our bidding. Now, there's been some interesting research that's been done to that. There's a book called The Rainbow Serpent. I think there's a movie of the same name, but it talks about a certain drug that anesthetizes a person so they put a curse on somebody and somehow feed them uh, through whatever this particular drug that puts them into a comatose-like state temporarily. And they appear to be dead, they get buried, and then they bring these people back up, revive them. I think that's a lot of what is going on here. Is Satan capable of taking a human body, the flesh not yet decayed, and energizing it into physical action? I suppose it might be possible, but you're never going to get any valid research that will prove that one way or another. So what's my take on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, religion, and so on? Well, Leland says Nephilim were wiped out on the flood for us to dig up later and confirm God's word. Yeah, but there were Nephilim, apparently at least giants, after the flood. Joshi, demons are everywhere to look for humans to dwell in. Christians who have a sin opening open the doors to the demons. Yes. My take on internet religion, first, the critics. The critics. The people out there who are self-styled experts, although some of them do have credible ministries, occasionally who take on whatever they don't like. And right now, one of the things they don't like is deliverance, deliverance in general. Everybody's in one big pot. Me and all some, some real weirdos out there. We're all thrown into one pot with these people. Now, I've reached out to foes of deliverance ministries. I just was looking at a list. I had a staff member who's in charge of that, contacting people for Bob Larson Live, a list of a who's who of the people we have contacted, many of them you would know, and they have large ministries out there through the internet, to come on this show and debate me about the subject of deliverance. I can't find any takers. Okay? I've, I've been willing to debate the subject of whether or not Christians can be demonized. And I've reached out to some of the 
top spokespersons in this arena. They won't come and debate me. Definitely not in a public context. Why? You believe it? You write books about it? You disseminate it? But you don't want anybody who's reasonably intelligent and articulate to have to defend it to, okay? Now, some of these people have huge followings, and they rant about what's going on with those who believe in casting out demons. And you know what? I actually agree with a lot of the foolishness that's going on. I agree it's foolishness. And not one of them, and I won't name them right now, will debate the matter. Most of them, many of them names you've known, they won't even return a phone call. After repeated attempts, and frankly, they just don't want a rational debate. It's easier to take cheap shots and hide in their xenophobic cocoons of theological prejudice. I'll tell you something else that my guest not being here tonight, I thought about this, made a few notes on it. I, can some of these <laughs> young influencers out there just cool their jets a little? I appreciate their enthusiasm and their energy. But can I say to you, you're not an expert on everything. Grabbing at headlines of social trends and becoming an instant internet celebrity because you have an opinion isn't psychologically or theologically sound. And that's part of what's creating this problem. And I think this guy's trying to imitate some other people who have been maybe more successful at it than he has. I don't know. I can't judge his motives. But that's what's happening out there. Whatever happened to the importance of sound education, theological depth, years of experience, and most of all, published peer review literature and books? Whatever happened to that? Can I repeat that? In the academic world, that's the standard. Peer review. It doesn't go into print until it's been peer reviewed. These people get in front of a microphone. Nobody's reviewing anything. As I said a few weeks ago, you can walk in my office and see I got a stack of over 50 books I've written. Big books, serious books, peer reviewed books. They didn't get past major publishers without having a theological committee and a lawyer and everybody else look at it. That's not happening. A ring light, a microphone, go after it. And that's a problem. The church isn't addressing it, and most people in the internet media are not addressing it. As long as I'm just kind of being unhinged tonight, Calling yourself a prophet and apostle without any qualifiers of terminology just sounds ridiculous. I don't care how many, how many subscribers you have on YouTube. Can we have a little humility here? Huh? Not everybody gets to be a prophet and apostle, okay? Okay, Joshua, or no, Joshi. Is the copulation between demon humans still occurring and giving birth to babies? Not Rosemary's baby. Is it attempted? Yes, I've run into that sort of thing. It appears, though, that at a certain point in time, sometime after the flood, we don't know exactly when, whatever was taking place, and again, I'm not saying the offspring of human and Nephilim, demonic type beings produced anything that was a fallen angel. But it appears as though it was possible in Genesis 6, might have been possible even up into the flood and shortly thereafter because there were still giants on the land. But this is all speculation. And anyone's opinion is as good as anybody else as long as they're theologically grounded. So, don't really know. Dr. Bob, if the spiritual sons of God in Genesis 6 can get on earth and have a physical human woman pregnant, then how? By spiritual sperm? It's a spiritual phenomenon. But apparently it was a physical phenomenon back then. Okay. 
Ah, Christian says, uh, the Internet's all based on looks and <laughs> not on actual knowledge of subject, okay? David, the problem of the world, too many people want to lead instead of following. Nobody's willing to go through God's training and learning to be humble, then lead. Yeah, okay. Ah, Jack, it's Glenn Benton from Deicide, demonically possessed. My old nemesis, Glenn Benton. I haven't heard from him in years. He's still out there. Yes, he is demon-possessed. I've had his demon speak directly to me. All right. Now, I want to tell you my theology. You didn't ask, but here it is. I, I do believe that in Genesis 6 there was some sort of cohabitation, as Jude 1 intimates. But fallen angels are demons in historic Christian orthodoxy, and they did not come from this union. Let me tell you, not once. In over 50,000 documented exorcisms, have I ever dealt with one demon that made the claim that they were descended from Nephilim? Or any other source other than their expulsion from heaven, according to Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Revelation. So, where these people are getting their theology, it ain't from deliverance, I can tell you that. And anyway, we are not called to speculate about where the Bible is silent. We are called to cast out demons in Jesus' name. Not argue about the nature of their essence. I'm telling you what I believe and what historic Christianity teaches, but at the same time, it's not a hill I'm going to die on, the one I will fight for, is casting out evil spirits and get as many people as I can enrolled in Bob Larson University to learn to do it what I believe is one of the best ways possible, okay? Andrea, some of the highest institutions lost their credibility. Social media seems more authentic. This has created a wild west of information environment excellence. Have you ever come across the spirit of Goliath and would he be considered a demon since he was a giant? He's not a demon. He was a giant. Was he hybrid? Perhaps. We don't really know. The Bible's silent. There's an old rule. Where the Bible speaks, I speak. Where the Bible is silent, I'm silent. Andre, watching you from India, Brother Bob, I would sure like a session with you to make sure that I'm not demonically possessed because I'm mixed race origin. Well, okay. Get in touch with my office. We'll see what we can do. Well, Sonia says, would you say that the Illuminati secret society is the most evil secret society of all secret societies? No, I think that still belongs to the Masons. All right, now, I want to tell you more about my theology. I just simply don't accept theological theories about the origin of demons of people who don't cast out demons. Now, I'm going to get really controversial here, and I, I will name some names because I think it has to be done. Let me repeat that. I don't listen to what people say about theories of the origin of demons when they don't personally cast out demons. I draw that line in the sand. Why? Just some things experience, teacher. I can tell you how to ride a horse, but until you get on, you don't know if you're going to get bucked off or not. It's a lot to be said for legitimate experience in the realm of the supernatural, of spiritual warfare, that hones your spiritual skills and, skills and understanding to the spirit world. Now, for example, the late Michael Heiser wrote a series of books and became his own self-styled expert on demons. But now listen, he was a great theologian, brilliant man. He was not an exorcist. And there's some new stuff out there about the Nephilim from David Hernandez. Fine young man. God's using him greatly. I've invited him to be on the show. No answer. But he doesn't believe that Christians can have demons and attacks those who believe 
that Christians can have demons, and he doesn't do exorcisms in terms of demonic manifestations in the lives of believers casting out demons. So, he may be a wonderful young man with a great call of God in his life, and I don't deny that. But wait a minute, when he steps over, as he did recently, and became an expert on the Nephilim, oh, wait a minute, maybe that wasn't wise to step into that territory. Because you don't know what you're wading into. If you're going to get into that territory, you better know something about real demons and real exorcism and real expulsion of evil spirits that manifest and you have to deal with them as I do day after day. In fact, this week, some extremely violent cases right here in our office, me sitting there in a cast and fighting the powers of darkness. And I don't do that one time. I do that thousands and thousands of times. Does that give me some credibility? Yes. Does that hone my skills, the spiritual understanding and discernment if I'm going to talk about something about the origin of demons? Yes. So if you don't, I just want to say this out there. Now hear me. I know this sounds pretty straightforward, but you expect that from me, don't you? I don't care who you are. If you don't do actual exorcisms dealing with real manifestation of demons, real manifestations, you folks have seen me, you know what I'm talking about. How can you know what's going on in real spiritual warfare? And that applies to anybody who pontificates about theological abstractionisms with no empirical data to support their claims. Speculation without validation is superstition. I know that was pretty strong. All right. The Book of Edict. This is a concern I have with this gentleman who was going to be on tonight. The book of any deviates from orthodox Christian doctrine found in the Bible. For example, it introduces the concept of two separate worlds, one for the righteous, one for the wicked. That's not in the Bible. A lot of inconsistencies potentially leading to confusion and misunderstanding about essential theological beliefs. There are a lot of inaccuracies in the so-called book of any, which is non-canonical, Mainstream Christianity, none of the church councils have ever accepted it. The Catholic Church doesn't accept it. It's apocryphal, truly apocryphal. It's outlying. And it's demonic in some ways. Many historical inaccuracies. For one, the book of Enoch says that he was taken up to heaven alive in a chariot of fire. The Bible just says he walked with God and he was gone. A lot of discrepancies that raise doubts about the book's reliability as an historical source. So, to recap, and I want to thank my guests who have been for giving me the opportunity to be stirred up and get across some things tonight. I know I've, I've come at you hard and strong, but, you know, sometimes we just have to take off the gloves. The Book of Enoch. No, stop reading it. It's speculative, non-canonical. It's not biblical. There may be references to it, like in Jude. That doesn't mean it's scriptural and inerrant. It's not inerrant. It's never been recognized by the Protestant Catholics as inerrant. So why are you reading it just to learn about the Nephilim when it's not a reliable source? Period. And you know what? These people who get into all of this fascinating speculation never pick up a Bible, cross, and some anointing oil and go out and actually, on a regular basis, cast out real demons from real people who love God but are tormented because of past sins which open doors to demons or generational curses. They don't do it. The people out there who are doing the work, like our do what Jesus did people, they don't have time for this stuff. 
they're not interested in calling themselves apostles and prophets. I'm certainly not. We just need people who are sold out to God, who hate the devil, and who want to see God's people set free. And for every moment spent speculating about demonic cohabitation, creating beings from which demons arose, you're losing precious moments of leading a soul to Jesus Christ. and seeing somebody delivered by the power of the Word of God. I've smoked my heart tonight. It's not what this show was all about. I had to completely change my thinking, jump in and, and address some of these highly controversial issues. If you appreciated what was shared, like and share so somebody else will know about it. Go ahead and do that right now. And if you aren't a regular subscriber, hit that notification bell because... We're going to do our best, humbly committed to seeing people delivered from the powers of darkness, daring to speak out, but also keeping it on the rails so it doesn't veer off into things which can bring disrepute to the body of Christ theologically. It's a very dangerous thing. Let's not fall into that trap. I appeal to all the young influencers, and some of the older influencers out there. Let's get back to get our eyes on Jesus. On Jesus. Yeah, there are going to be some interesting things come along from time to time that you talk about, I talk about. But you're always going to see this ministry come back to Christ and setting people free in His name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for standing by me. Well, the last three months I've been hobbling around on this cast. I'm delivered <laughs> today. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a total healing and restoration to the strength to do the work for God that's ahead of us. And thank you for helping us in Roland Bob Larson University. If I can minister to you personally, through me, through one of our associate ministers or Do What Jesus Did teams, contact our office immediately right away. Let's get some personal time together where I can look you in the eye and tell you what I've told millions. With Jesus, you can get free, stay free, and live free. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. Or call 303-980-1511.